Hello and welcome back. I am absolutely delighted because something incredible happened this week. I just found out that we had hit 100, 100 subscribers <laughs> on this channel. Uh, if you're looking at this video and maybe you have 10k subscribers, 100k subscribers, I don't care, it's my 100 subscribers and I want to thank you all so, so, so much for subscribing. Um, it's, it's an incredible feeling to know that uh, this many people are actually uh, following or enjoying the video so I'm, I'm super grateful for you and if you're new please just click the subscribe button right away and like it as well so today we are talking about setting IV lines IV for intravenous lines so an IV line is just basically uh, a rubber tubing or a pipe in quotes through which we give uh, intravenous medications um, instead of tablets sometimes or other roots so i'm going to teach you how to set an iv line i'm going to divide the steps and the tricks and tips so i'm also going to give you tips and tricks that learned along the line uh, that i found out helps me get a higher rate of achieving success on the first try of setting the iv line i'm dividing the tips into pre-contact contact and post-contact tips starting right away first um pre-contact tip or I'm just going to give you four of them. I call them is GGPP. So G for good lighting. This is super underrated, especially if you're doing a low resource setting, um, like I am, where you know power is not to, may not be 24 hours, or the quality of light that you're getting per bed might not be so good. It is super crucial that um, you go ahead and and find a good source of light get an assistant if you need to someone that could help you hold it up i know it sounds a bit a cake and whatever but it's what we have to deal with at the moment so get someone to hold the light for me and not too close because when it's too close it could glare off the skin and you won't even be able to see the vein so at just a good distance from the site that you want to use let's say 20 cm uh person assisting you can hold the light in place if you don't have good light in there the second g is glucose another underrated tip i am being very honest with you you'll find out that you will miss small lines when you are tending towards hypoglycemia when you are low on glucose in your body than when you have eaten and you're actually prepared it is something you just notice that lines that you should get on a normal day where the veins are popping and everything is all set you find out that you miss some of those lines simply because uh, your brain is fatigued and you just need some more glucose in your body the first p is uh, positioning so it's important that you are aligned with the patient it is super crucial so if you can avoid it um, you might not want to hunch over or be at an awkward angle if you can help it i know there are some situations especially in the emergency where you can't help it very much but when you can align with the position of the patient and be comfortable as you do it so if the patient's hand is like this for example uh, you don't want to be coming at it at this kind of angle to set the line. You just want to come along the axis of it so that both you and the patient are comfortable. Second P is patience. Yes, you have to be quite patient when you're setting a line. Um, you can't be in too much of a hurry. Again, there are exceptions, of course, like again in the emergency area. But... Uh, you have to calm down and realize that what you're doing, you want to do it once because it hurts. Many doctors don't know it uh, because they're so used to doing it and many of them have never gotten an IV line uh, set on them. They don't realize it is, it is painful or it can be painful. It's not excruciating pain, but it is significant discomfort to the patient. So you don't want to do it too many times. So uh, make sure you have patience and uh, pick out what vein you want to use and go for it. With four pre-contact tips. First is good uh, lighting, second is glucose, third is positioning, and fourth is patience. For the contact phase or the, for the contact tips, we're going to go into the actual setting of the line. So here it is. The materials you would require include a saline flush, a cannula, then spirit, only cotton wool, and then a cotton wool with no spirit on it, a tourniquet, which we improvised. Uh, for using a glove and then plaster and of course all these have to be on a sterile field which was also improvised here 
this is how the cannula comes and i'm going to show you how to open it so you open it from the back not uh the front you don't puncture the front at all for the parts of a cannula right there is the needle with the open end facing up next is the rubber catheter that is the injection port in there is the lock next is the needle grip and then by the sides uh, we have the wings which help with stability and help with your gripping the cannula to insert and i'll show you how i hold the cannula to make things easier for me uh, with my index finger and my middle finger i just grip the sides of the wings and those help me just um, direct the cannula whichever way i want it to go and it's also rather comfortable the first thing to do is to identify the vein you want to use. You're looking for a vein that is straight, uh, not too wiggly. And the, go 15 to 20 cm above it and apply your tonique. Uh, once again, we're improvising here. If you have an actual tonique, do so. But if you don't, then a glove will just do it screwed, but it gets the job done. Notice also that. I place the hand a bit downwards this is for gravity to also help in pulling blood to those uh, veins over there to help dilate them as well already you can see the difference before we applied the tonique and after however sometimes you may have to wait up to 15 to 30 seconds if the veins aren't obvious yet ask the patient to open and close his hands as well and this could help uh, make the veins more visible if the veins aren't still standing out as much as you want, then lightly tap that area and that would also cause the veins there to vasodilate. The next thing to do is to clean the area you want to work on with an alcohol swab or a cotton wool with spirit on it. Notice how I'm wiping in a circular motion from the inside out so as not to reintroduce uh, germs to the place I have already cleaned. The next thing to do is to pull out your cannula and roughly estimate if the vein can take the whole length of your cannula by placing it along the axis of the vein. During this process, I make sure that the cannula is aligned with the vein to reduce the risk of rupturing the vein by coming at it from an awkward angle. Notice that with my non-dominant hand, I pull down the skin of the patient's hand just to stabilize the vein and make it less mobile. At an angle of 10 to 15 degrees, I gently pierce the top of the vein and then watch for the flashback in the flashback chamber, which I just pointed to. The blood flashback indicates that the needle and not necessarily the rubber catheter is in the vein. And so I'll still advance it further 1 cm like I did and then gently pull back using the needle grip. Seeing blood in the rubber catheter shows that the catheter itself is now in the vein. So you have the green light to slowly advance fully into the vein. Apply firm pressure to the proximal end of the rubber catheter and not the distal end just before the wings because um, pressure at the distal end can still cause some blood spillage through the end of the rubber tubing. Pull out the needle entirely and dispose in a sharp box and undo your tonique. Take out your saline flush and stabilizing the cannula with your left thumb, gently flush with about uh, 3 to 4 ml just to ensure the patency of the line and to make sure that it's not in tissue. Next thing to do is to cap the cannula using the lock and to open up the wings of the cannula. Anchor the cannula to the skin with plaster with one strip going across the wings of the cannula and the point of entry. The next strip of plaster is typically called the butterfly strip because we split it down in the middle and uh, it is put under the lock onto the remaining parts of the wings of the cannula. The final strip of plaster goes across the first strip, the second strip, and the point of entry as well, just to make it more stable. Notice how the plaster doesn't go all the way around to form a circle. 
This is to avoid a tourniquet effect and also reduce the chances of the line tissueing. And by tissueing, we mean that any fluid that we push through the IV cannula uh, gets extravasated into body tissue. I just want to point out something very quickly. This tip will really help you. Now, on your cannula, if you notice the top end that has the uh, hole in it, the bevel, even as you want to go in, you notice that that top part of the needle is quite blunt. So there's almost no risk of rupturing. That is why in a vein, once you're inside a vein, you can actually lift the cannula up and it won't pierce. But if you try to apply the same pressure downwards, that needle is going to stab through the back wall of that vein. So a tip way is that once you go inside, lift uh, the needle uh, just to dodge that back wall because you don't want to, to pierce it. It is so frustrating and so annoying when you have a perfectly good vein and maybe you're hurrying or something and you go in, you see your flashback and then by the time you advance, you just realize you're no more in the vein because you have accidentally ruptured either the side or the back wall of it. So you want to make sure once you go in to an extent, you see the flashback, lift it up a bit. This, as I'm telling you this now, this is going to save you so many, so many uh, bust lines. So once you go in, get the flashback, lift it up so that you see even the skin is a bit lifted. And advance with it lifted a bit now extra one cm we're going to advance with it lifted and um continue the rest of the steps as usual you pull out your needle this will really save you from um that needle rupturing any other end of that uh, vein now for the post contact phase of setting an iv line here are some pointers and tips number one is to make sure you discard all the sharps appropriately because there is a high chance you could uh, hurt either you yourself or the patient if you don't adequately dispose your sharps if you leave it lying around on the table or on the bed someone could get into trouble second is to double check that you have actually taken off the tourniquet i'm going to say it again double check that you've taken off the tourniquet especially if you are in pediatric A third is to use the appropriate syringe size now this is a tip no one is going to tell you i don't think it's in any textbook but if you have something like a yellow cannula and that's what you're using you obviously don't want to push a uh, fluid in a 20 mil syringe through it at first it's not even going to work out for you so make sure so that your lines last um and you want to change the lines when it's time to change the lines not having your lines tissue and unfortunately many of them will tissue in the middle of the night so um, you want it to stay as long as you want. So, uh, for yellow cannulas, I wouldn't recommend going beyond a five mil or ten mil. Even ten mil, you have to go real slow. Uh, blue cannulas, I won't recommend beyond uh, ten mil. For the twenty mils, um, for me, it's from the twenty. It's from the pink cannula and above, pink green, and even at that, um, super careful. I try to adjust avoid twenty mil syringes generally with my um iv line so unless i'm using a central line or something thank you so 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 much for watching i appreciate it if you found this helpful please recommend this to your doctor friends your nurse friends your friends in general and tell them to subscribe see you next time